So now we will solve some problems which are based on finding the basis and dimension of the solution space. So let us now try to write down the question first. I'm writing consider the system x plus 2y plus 3z equal to 0 then 2x plus y minus z equal to 0 and third equation I'm getting taking is 3x plus 3y plus 2z equal to 0 okay and I am going to find the basis and dimension of the solution space so how am I going to solve this problem I will first write the given system in a matrix form so the matrix form is 1 2 3 augmented form I'm going to write directly 0 0 0 2 1 minus 1 3 3 and I'm going to reduce it to reduce to the colon form now when I observe here carefully I observe that the addition of the first row and the second row is actually the third row so I will do R3 <coughs> minus r1 plus r2 if you don't observe and if you try to reduce it by your own method still you will get the same echelon form so when i do that the last row becomes completely 0 0 0 the first and second row remains as it is 1 2 3 0 and 2 1 minus 1 and 0 Okay, now I can convert this 2 into 0. Now, how, what will I do for that? In R2, I will make a change. It is, I will make R2 minus 2 R1. So, when I do that, the first row will remain as it is 1, 2, 3, 0. The second row will now get converted into what? This will become a 0 over here. <coughs> and R2 minus 2. So, 1 minus 4 is minus 3 and minus 1 minus 6 will become minus 7 and this will become 0 okay I will so I get here this is a leading entry and here also this is a leading entry so last row is 0 so I understand that x is a leading variable and y is also a leading variable and therefore z is what Z is a free variable. Now here this is minus 3. Even if I divide the entire row by minus 3, still I will get a 1 year. So that that entry will never become 0. That is why this becomes a leading variable. Okay, Y becomes a leading variable. And now let us write down the equations from this. So what are the equations from this? From the first line you will get x plus 2y plus 3z is 0 from the second row you will get minus 3y minus 7z is 0 and z is free variable so i will put z equal to t so z is t and this t is a real number therefore when i substitute the value of z in the second equation the second equation will become minus 3y minus 7t is equal to 0 and therefore minus 3y is 7t and therefore y will become what minus 7 upon 3t so this is how i get the value of y and when i substitute the value of x and y in equation 1 and the value of y and z in equation 1 I'm, I have x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 0 and therefore I will get x is equal to minus 2y minus 3z and this is equal to minus 2 into minus 7 upon 3t minus 3t because z is t 
and y is how much? 97 by 3t. So you'll get a 14 by 3t minus 3t. Just 14 minus 9 is 5. So it is 5 by 3t. So here you'll get the value of x. And therefore, what is the solution? The solution x, y, z is how much? 5 by 3t. Y is minus 7 by 3t and z is just t. So when I take a t common, I'm going to get, let me take the fractional part also common because I want a good vector which is inside. So when I take a t, t by 3 common, I'll get 5 minus 7 and a 3 will come here because this 3 into 3 will cancel and you'll get a t. So you get what? 5 minus 7 and 3. So we will write that the basis of the solution space consists the vector 5 minus 7 and 3 you have to just write this vector this is this is the basis of the solution space how many people how many vectors you got you got only one vector suppose you get two vectors then you will write the dimension is two so now i got only one vector so what is the dimension of the solution space? The dimension of solution space is how much is one. OK, we'll solve one more problem. <clears throat> so find the basis of dimension, find the basis and dimension of the solution space. I'm giving you the system is x1 minus 4x2 plus 3x3 minus x4 is equal to zero. And the second equation is 2x1 minus x2 plus 5x3 minus 3x4 is equal to 0. I'm going to find what? Find basis and dimension of solution space. Okay. Now, how am I going to do this again? So, solution, I'm going to write this in the matrix form. When I write this in the matrix form, so I'm going to get 1, minus 4, 3, minus 1, augmented with 0, 0 on the right hand side. You have four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. The second row is 2, minus 1, 5, and minus 3. Okay, I will try to make this second, this entry 0. So I'll just do R2 minus, R2 I'm going to replace by R2 minus 2, R1. And when I do that, I'm going to get 1 minus 4, 3 minus 1 as it is. This is 0, 0. This will become 2 minus 2 will become 0, minus 1 and plus 4 to the 8. So it will become 7. And here I'm going to get 5 minus 6, which is minus 3 and minus 3 minus of minus 2 multiplied by that. So it will become minus 2. So minus 3 plus 2 will become minus 1. So the last will be minus 1. OK, now <clears throat> again, if I divide the second row by 7, this 7 upon 7 will become 1. OK, and I mean that it will not become 0. Even if I divide it by 7, it will not become 0. So I will leave it. I will not divide it by 7 because if I divide the equation, the row second by 7, I will get all fractions and which I don't want. So I understand that when I find the leading variables, I get that the first le variable is leading variable, means x1 is a leading variable because the arrow hits in the first position itself, right? And when I hit the arrow in the second row, I get that x2, which is the second variable, is also the leading variable. And therefore, I understand that the remaining two variables will become now what? The remaining two variables will become free. So x3 is a free variable and x4 is also what? x4 is also a free variable. So it means that I am supposed to put x3 equal to some t where t is a real number. And x4 is also a free variable. So I will put x4 is equal to s where s is also some real number. Why? Because they are they both are free variables. Now we will write the equations from the first and the second row. So what are the equations I'm going to get from the first and the second row? The equations I'm going to get from the first row is x1 minus 4x3 plus 3x, sorry, this is x2. 
three x three minus x four is equal to zero. From the second row, we get seven x two minus x three minus x four is equal to how much? Zero. And now we will find the value of x three and x four are already found out. Okay. So we want to just find now x one and x two. So from the sec from the second equation, I'm going to get seven x two minus t minus s is equal to how much? Is equal to zero, and therefore I will get seven um, x two is equal to t plus s, and therefore I'll get x two is t plus s by seven. So I got the value of x two. And when I put all this in equation one, I'm going to get x1 is equal to four. I'm going to substituting it here. Four x2 minus three x3 plus x4, and uh, x3 is how much? T. X4 is s, and four times x2. X2 is how much? T plus s upon seven. So I'm getting it as four by seven t. Plus four by seven s minus three t plus s, and I will simplify in terms of s and t. So when I have four by seven t minus three t, I'm going to get four minus twenty uh, one. Correct. So which is seventeen, um, right? So it's minus seventeen by four. Minus 17 by 7t. Okay, and how much is this? This is 4 by 7 plus 1, right? So it will be 11 by 7s. So, so the solution x1, x2, x3, x4 will be equal to how much? X1 is how much? Minus 17 by 7t. Plus 11 upon 7s. Here you have to be very careful. Okay, now pay attention. X2, X2 is how much? T plus s upon 7 means that is I'll write it as t upon 7 plus s upon 7. X3 is how much? X3 is t and X4 is s. Now we will separate t people and s people. Separate t's and s's. Okay. When I separate the t's and s's, how am I going to write this? I'm going to write it as this plus this. This is very important. This step is very important. This is minus seven by seven, minus seventeen by seven t. Here I'm going to get eleven uh, by seven s. First component is done. T people separated, s people. Second component is here. I have a t by seven, and here I have a s by seven. the third component there is only t so it is just t okay and here there is nothing so i have zero third component there is no s component and then the last component there is no there is no t in the last component so i have this is zero and this is just a s okay so this t is as good as what this t is t plus zero and this s is what zero plus s okay The t part is t and s part is zero. Here you have zero and s. Okay, so this is how I look the two things. And now I will pull out the seven and a t common from the first vector. So I'm going to get minus seventeen. I'm going to get seven uh, because I have a seven multiplied over. I'm sorry, I just have a one here. Then if I pull out a set, one upon seven, I will get seven. And here I'm going to get zero plus s times. Here I'm going to pull out again a seven denominator. So I'm going to get eleven. Then I'm going to get a one. I'm going to get zero. And here I'm going to get a seven because seven into seven is what? Seven into seven is seven over seven is one. So that is how I manage that fraction part. So I got the basis consists of two vectors. The two vectors are what? The two vectors are minus seventeen one seven zero. This is the first vector, and second vector is eleven one zero and seven. So this is the basis of what? This is the basis of the solution space. 
Okay, and what is the dimension of the solution space? There are two vectors. I got two vectors inside it. So the dimension of the solution space is two. Okay, with these two examples, I hope the concept of basis and dimension of the solution space is understood. 